We're in a pandemic, so for the love of all that is science, please stay home, practice social distancing, wash your hands regularly, and stay healthy. My videos tackle subjects dealing with nature, which can be gross and scary to some. Viewer discretion is advised. If you're under the age of 13, please watch with a guardian. Thanks. Last time I tackled a viral paleontology mystery, it was the destroyed remains of mummified soft tissue of the one and only specimen of Carnotaurus. That was a crying shame, but it may not have been as groundbreaking as it was originally thought. What appeared to be soft tissue preserved as a cast around the skull of Carnotaurus was more than likely hematite concretions surrounding the bone. This isn't just me being skeptical. Nor is it me just looking at the photo and dismissing it. The fossils of Carnotaurus were encased in hematite concretions, the entire skeleton to greater or lesser degrees. Using the concept of Occam's razor to find the most parsimonious explanation suggests that it is more likely that the skull was encased in hematite that just so happened to look like the rugose, bumpy, scraggly skin, scutes, and keratin we know would have covered the theropod's face then for it to be A, actual skin or keratin impressions, and B, be prepared away without any care for the biological data such mummified remains could provide. Since that video, the guy who found Carnotaurus, Dr. Jose Bonaparte, passed away at the age of 91. He was an incredibly prolific scientist and was almost single-handedly responsible for making Argentina the sixth country in the world in variety of dinosaurs. He will be remembered for his contributions and for his passion for the field. Just when you thought it would be the end of photos of weird paleontological holy grails surfacing online, a new one has popped up over the last week or so. Protoceratops, the first horned face, is a small to medium sized early ceratopsian from the upper Cretaceous period of what is now Mongolia. Like Velociraptor, Cetacosaurus, and many of the Oviraptorosaurs, which made up the ecosystems of Cretaceous Mongolia, Protoceratops is known from way too many fossils. Enough specimens of the hornless wonder are known that nearly every aspect of the group's life and anatomy is well understood. Specimens ranging in age from embryonic to elderly are known, giving us a clear step-by-step -step progression of changes as they aged, from frillless, bug-eyed babies to big-beaked, oval-frilled adults. Protoceratops was found during the American Museum of Natural History funded expeditions to Mongolia. Helmed by Roy Chapman Andrews and sparked by Henry Fairfield Osborne during the 1920s, the expeditions were lucrative beyond belief, and many dinosaur bones, eggs, and traces were found along with bizarre mammals which diversified after the Mesozoic. The most priceless find of Protoceratops is obviously the fighting dinosaur specimen which represents a snapshot in time of a fight for food and life between Protoceratops and Velociraptor. The Dromaeosaur has its sickle claw at or in the small Ceratopsian's throat area, while the herbivore's beak is clenched firmly around the arm of the predator. A new photo has surfaced on Twitter of a specimen of Protoceratops that is quite extraordinary, has a lot of implications if real, but probably is second place to the fighting dinosaur specimen. Given the numerical designation AMNH6418, this specimen is of a young adult animal and includes the skull, much of the torso, part of the tail, and some bits of the legs. The least unusual but still interesting thing about the skeleton is the way it's curled up with a foot over its head, almost like it had a bad dream before it perished. Now, what you see here is what the fossil looks like now. This is what the specimen looked like when it was originally recovered back to the museum. What is that stuff covering the face? Is that skin? In characteristic fashion of the time, the researchers who described this specimen brush over the implications of the specimen in a short paragraph. Edited, the researchers state, only one specimen presents any suggestion of the integument. This is a nearly complete skeleton. A thin, hard, and wrinkled layer of matrix covers a considerable portion of the skull and jaws. 
The wrinkling has a very skin-like appearance and is mostly on the left side of the head, over the eye socket, at the corner of the mouth just in front of the cheekbones, and over the side of the frill and lateral temporal opening. As far as can be determined, it is without any trace of skin structure. The surface form of the original skin, however, undoubtedly influenced the form of the matrix at burial, and by the chemical action set up through its decay, probably caused this thin layer of matrix surrounding the bone to become considerably indurated. Summarized, the researchers are saying what looks like skin on the outside of the specimen is not actually true fossilized skin. Rather, it's rocky matrix which had covered the animal's soft tissue and hardened in a thin layer over it. It therefore has some impressions under it that push the matrix into a more skin-like texture. Does that mean if we took the skin-like matrix off, there might be true skin impressions under it? Unfortunately, it doesn't matter now, since whatever that stuff on the outside actually is, has been prepared away to reveal the bone beneath. True, many scientists at the time were not super interested in the biological aspects of these extinct animals. Many just wanted more fossils to describe and add to their museums for research. Others wanted more fossils for a better understanding of evolution, even to a eugenics-minded or racially biased manner. I don't want to believe that if something like this was found, that it would be totally prepared away, unless it really wasn't what it looked like. There were more than enough Protoceratops specimens collected to make the preparing unnecessary, unless it wasn't truly important. But like I said, it doesn't matter, since it's gone now, and we only have these photos that prove it was even there.